What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. Today in our third of a series episode testing the Mac Mini M1, we're gonna see if it can handle fusion inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. So I've put this Mac Mini M1 through quite a bit of testing. Again, I'm only scratching the surface and there's plenty of people that do benchmarks and all those other kinds of tests that I just don't do on my channel. I just wanna see real world tests. Can this thing keep up with what my workflow is? Does it work for what I need it to do? Or is it gonna bog me down, slow me down? And really I should just stay with what I have until a more pro line comes out. That's really the questions I have on this Mac Mini M1. Again, if you guys haven't seen the other two videos, I will have a link in the description below for the other two videos. Today, we are just testing out Fusion. I just wanna see, can this handle Fusion at all? Can the base eight gigs of RAM, it, I mean, it's the base, 256 gigs. This thing's like 700 bucks, I think, total. What's gonna happen? So let's jump inside DaVinci Resolve and we'll get going. So I've got just a basic Fusion composition clip that I brought in. Uh, in a 4K timeline right here. We're gonna hop inside Fusion and we're gonna start creating some things. I'm not gonna go too overboard because I'm just trying to uh, see what this can handle. Uh, so we're just gonna go ahead and add a background node inside here and then we're also gonna add a text. Uh, the background node will just pick uh, a color. We'll just do red is fine. Uh, and then we're also gonna add a text and we will connect it to our tree let's bring that up i'm just going to type in test we'll make it a little bit bigger and let's change this to something a little bit different yeah that should work fine uh, so all i really want to do is just have this whip in so we're going to go layout uh, i am going to add a keyframe where i think looks good sure uh, and then we are going to move it over um, and I'm going to move it way over here and I'll automatically drop a keyframe. Uh, we'll go here. We'll add another one, go to the end and we will whip it off that way. Uh, let's see if we can even play that through. That plays through fine completely, like no problem whatsoever. Uh, again, it's very basic, so it's not a lot's happening right now. Uh, now I do know something that will definitely bog down almost every computer and I always recommend doing it uh, at the end uh, and that is adding motion blur. Uh, so we're gonna go to settings, we're gonna turn on motion blur. Uh, I'm not gonna mess with anything that's on there. Uh, we're gonna play that through. Surprisingly, that plays through really well, like phenomenally well. Uh, that is quite impressive. So let's take this up a notch and see if we can start to bog this computer down. So I've added some more visual effects inside here that normally really bog down computers to see if it can handle it. And I really just went overboard. Uh, playing it through, it's not super amazing. Uh, it is usable and it does play it through. Uh, so you could actually use that. Let's try changing the color maybe, see if that'll mess with it a little bit. Uh, see how that does. Again, it's not amazing, but it is usable. So that is quite impressive that it's actually playing it at all. I know some computers that really don't like to play it. Uh, and I'm just gonna let it play through for a minute and see if it renders itself. That seems to handle it pretty good. Uh, playing it through a couple times actually tended to help it. Uh, so I'm gonna go back to the edit page. I'm gonna let it render out and then play it through and see how it's doing. That's actually not playing back terrible. Uh, once it gets going, it tends to do better. Again, I still think that's a glitch inside DaVinci Resolve when it starts to play, because now it's playing fine, and I threw a lot of that atmosphere in there. Uh, so it's got quite a bit. Uh, to try to bring this to its knees as our last test, uh, I am going to take some footage that I used on the last video, uh, and we are just gonna put it underneath uh, and see if this can handle it. It definitely drops some frames, but once it plays through once, it's like good to go. And it was already rendered, so I didn't even need to re-render. Um, that's quite impressive. Uh, that's with a fusion composition on top with quite a bit of effects on it. That would bring most computers to their knees. Uh, so let's do one last test. We're gonna add an adjustment clip on top of the fusion composition. We're gonna hop inside the color page. We are going to add a grade that is way over the top. 
uh, hop back in here in the edit page and um, play that through. Definitely slow at the beginning, same problem, but I mean, it see now it picks up, it's usable. That is 100% usable, that is quite impressive. And I know you guys are thinking this isn't like a crazy fusion test, but again, if it can handle this, it's going to handle a lot of your title graphics and some things like that. So that's crazy. Uh, the very last thing I wanna try is, let's try splitting this video clip in half. Let's go here to the resolve transitions. We will do the burn because I know it just demolishes people's computers. Uh, we'll put it in the middle of the video clips, play that through, see how that does. Again, slow at the beginning, not wanna play at all plays through, it still has a hard time when it gets to that burn. Yeah, it still slows up when it gets to the burn. So that is kind of stuttering it and bringing it to its knees right there. Again, that is usable. I don't know if I would give it like an A pass. It's definitely kind of like a C on that. Uh, everything else, amazing. I'm amazed that this computer can handle that kind of stuff. And again, base model, this thing is $700. Seeing what this computer can do really excites me for what the future holds with these new chips. There you go, guys. That's my final results on Fusion with the Mac Mini M1 base model. Uh, now, again, this isn't groundbreaking information, but it is real world testing. I needed to see, can this computer even handle it? For me personally, I probably will not be keeping this Mac Mini M1. It is amazing to see what Apple is doing and I am super excited for the future to come, but I think I'm just gonna sit on the computer I have right now and hold off until more of their pro line comes out. However, if you guys really are in the need for something, this thing can work. I may say go ahead and jump up to the 16 gigs of RAM. I know there's been some other testings where people have seen it and they really don't see a whole lot of difference, but if it's being hard soldered in there into the chip and it's integrated in it, you might as well just spend the couple extra hundred bucks and get the 16 gigs of RAM. I would probably get a little bit more than 256 gigs also of an SSD, but that's just me. Again, it's gotta fit your needs and what your workflow is. So that's my conclusion for this today, guys. Uh, it works but it's not 100% groundbreaking. I, I know it's kind of mixed feelings on it, but I am very excited for what the future holds with the new M1 line and their new Pro line, whatever that's gonna be called. If you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up, drop a comment below. Let me know uh, your thoughts on the M1 Mac Mini. Are you gonna pick one up? Are you gonna wait for the Pro line? I wanna hear your thoughts. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already with the bell notification on so you don't miss any of my new videos. You guys are amazing. I'm the Iron Giant. See you next time. Peace.